Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from Our Space. Have you ever felt like the third wheel? Today on Our Space, it's time these OPs turn off the infidelity highway and take the scenic route. Up first, there's nothing like a Saturday morning surprise. Let's open up the relationship, the breakfast of champions in relationship land. Girlfriend asked for an open relationship. Is there any chance at saving this? Hello all. Hope you all are having a great start to your weekend. Can't say mine has been great. I apologize if this sub isn't the right place for a question like this, but I feel like it is. Let's just get into it. This morning, my girlfriend, who we will call Rose, a 24 female, told me she needed to talk to me about something very important. Turns out this important thing was to ask if we could open up the relationship. This felt like a huge gut punch. I really thought we had a good relationship. I'm a 25 male, and we've been together for two and a half years. I was pretty stunned, and I think she could tell, because she seemed to backtrack very quickly. I asked her why she'd want to open up the relationship, and she said she thinks it would help us both grow? What does that mean? Anyway, I won't go over the whole conversation. I tried to stay calm as much as I could. Eventually told her I'd like her to leave while I thought about everything. She seems pretty distraught, which makes me wonder if she thought I'd react differently. Anyway, my main question is, is there any chance at saving this? Really up until this point, I thought things were going good. Maybe I'm still kind of in shock, but I'd like to possibly save the relationship. This literally happened like an hour ago and I'm really having a difficult time processing, but I feel really hurt. And I've always heard that when one partner requests to open the relationship, that it's basically over. Any advice is appreciated. Has anyone ever gotten through a situation like this? Or does it always end in crap? Thanks y'all. Edit. Okay, y'all have convinced me. I was already leaning towards ending everything, but considering I haven't gotten a single person telling me this would work or that she probably isn't already cheating, I think it's time to end it. I'm gonna call her right now and have her come get her stuff. Luckily, we don't share an apartment, so not too much stuff will need to be moved. Thanks for all the advice, everyone. I genuinely appreciate it. Edit two. She's very upset, y'all, yelling at me about how I can end the relationship over a question. I should have just packed her stuff and had her come get it. <laughs> should not have called. Let's see what the community thinks of this. First up, she's either cheating or has someone in mind. She wants to keep you as plan B. Don't open the relationship. It never works out and you'll just get even more hurt than if you just break up with her. Someone is putting the open relationship in her head. Someone else chimes in. Open relationship request means, one, she has cheated and feels guilty and wants to wipe that away. Two, she wants to get her back blown out by Jimmy Thunderbang while utilizing you for your resources and support, cake eater. Or three, she's actively interviewing your replacement, monkey branching. At any rate, she already has cheated or knows who she wants to bang. Maybe she even has a list. It's over, end it. Someone else says, don't ask any questions, just say this. Rose, I thought about it. Since you want to act single, I'm making you single. As of now, we are both single, so you can F the person you have in mind, but I will not be waiting for you. I deserve better than that. Then walk away. Then after you leave, mark single on all your socials. With the caption, it sucks when someone wants to use the guise of opening the relationship as a way to cheat on you with a clear conscience. Ah, uh, weekends. The perfect time for relationship bombshells. It's like brunch, but with a side of emotional turmoil. So Rose drops the, let's open the relationship grenade, huh? Classic move. It's like saying, hey, I know we've been sharing this ice cream cone for a while, but I really want to see if there's a better flavor out there. And then the backtracking begins. It's like watching someone try to defuse a bomb they just threw. Oh no, wait, I didn't mean it. Let's just pretend that didn't happen, shall we? But seriously, suggesting an open relationship as a growth strategy? That's like trying to fix a broken leg with a band-aid. I mean, sure, it may distract you from the pain for a moment, but it's not really addressing the issue. Update. Well, today has sucked backsides. When Rose came over to pick up her stuff, well, didn't quite go like that. She was quite adamant that we were not breaking up, especially over a hypothetical situation. Well, I'm not exactly proud of this, but it sort of blew up at her. We had a relationship where I never really yelled, so I think it might have scared her, honestly. And again, I'm not exactly proud of it, but I really wanted to get some answers. After reading all of the comments, y'all have me convinced she was cheating. Eventually, she completely broke down and guess what? Some of y'all were right. She had already slept with someone. Hypothetical my butt, Rose. I really thought I felt broken earlier. Turns out, I didn't even know the definition. 
I felt an insane mix of emotions, most rage and sadness, a great combination. Honestly, there was a moment where I thought I was going to put a hole in the wall. I'm proud of myself for not doing that. I calmly told her to get any of her crap and leave. She was in hysterics at this point. She kept telling me we could get through it and not to throw our relationship away. I simply told her that she did that. I just sat on the couch, numb, waiting for her to grab her crap. Eventually, she left. Some of you probably could have predicted this, but she ended up leaving a decent amount of crap here. Should have just packed it all up for when she got here. So inevitably, I'll have to deal with that. Sorry I stopped responding to y'all. I've been sitting on the couch just thinking of everything. My phone is blowing up with messages from Rose, her best friend, and her sister. I don't even know how to tell my friends and family. I think I'm just going to pack the rest of her crap and have one of my friends take it to her. Don't really want to see her again. I feel nauseous. Thanks for the advice. I'm glad I listened to you guys and didn't get tricked into something stupid. I didn't mention this in the first post, but this was my first real relationship, so I was hesitant at first to let it go. Having a hard time processing how different my life was literally 13 hours ago. Appreciate everyone who left a comment and reached out. The community has some more words of wisdom. First up, dude. Advice from a 44 year old man who has dealt with cheaters twice. Tell everyone what happened today. Give every detail you know. Do it fast. If you don't, she will try to blame you and stab you in the back. Make you out to be the bad guy. Sorry you're a member of this group now. All the best. Someone else chimes in. I'm sorry you're going through this, man, but you dodged a bullet here. You don't have any kids or assets and you're not married, so you can just block her and erase her from your life. It won't be easy and take time you need to heal, but eventually you will heal. She asked for an open relationship because she felt guilty about cheating and wanted to keep doing it without guilt. There's no excuse for cheating. Her friends and sister will try and tell you she made a mistake and to not throw away your relationship over one mistake, but she made a choice to cheat and lie, then suggested an open relationship to ease her guilt, then will gaslight the crap out of you, block all of them. So Rose's adamant denial of her breakup, huh? And surprise, surprise, turns out it wasn't just a hypothetical situation after all. I guess Rose missed the memo that cheating isn't a part of a healthy relationship diet. In the explosive confrontation, nothing like a good old yelling match to spice up the breakup proceedings. But hey, props to you for not redecorating the walls with new ventilation holes, keeping it classy in the midst of chaos. And now you're stuck with a pile of Rose's stuff like a souvenir from a disastrous vacation. Not to mention the joys of modern communication, your phone blowing up like a fireworks display courtesy of Rose and her entourage. I guess she's going for the, if you can't win them over, drown them in messages approach. Update. Additional update. Hello, y'all. Since my last post got so much attention, I thought some of you lovely gentlewomen and dudes would like to know how the last two days have gone. Well, my phone was blowing up with texts from Rose, her sister, and her best friend. Didn't respond to Rose a single time. However, I stupidly responded to the others for a little bit. You all probably know what was said, throwing away the relationship over something minor, yada, yada. I did have to laugh at the BFF telling me I'm a witch for not fighting for my relationship and clearly I didn't care about her if I left it that easy. So I dikembe mutomboed their butts, took Sunday to try and not fall into a horrible pit of despair and self-loathing by watching some ball and playing some Zelda. You guys would be proud of me, I haven't had a single drop of alcohol since crap went down. Today was the day I worked on some crap, packed up her stuff, had a buddy drop it off at her place. He sent me a photo of it that he just left it on the top of her car. I thought that was pretty funny. Some of y'all were worried about me reaching out to people. The people that I'm actually concerned with knowing are aware of everything. Finally got the balls to call my mom, was filled with shame and had a hard time calling her. I even sent a text to Rose's parents informing them of my side of what happened, just in case she spread some fibs. Some straight up lies, fabrications, y'all get the idea. Then Rudy goberted their butts too. I did want to touch on one thing. Some of y'all were convinced in my first post that my friend who didn't like Rose was the one she was having hypothetical situations with. I would be genuinely shocked, more shocked than finding out Rose was a cheater. He lives about five hours away and only met her once. He's also engaged, which doesn't necessarily mean he couldn't cheat, I guess, but I would be very, very surprised. The support y'all have given me has been overwhelming, but I appreciate every comment and message. I think I'm a long way from feeling good again, but you guys have helped me believe that it's something I can feel again someday. Honestly, would be surprised if I update again, but I thought I'd give a little bit of closure to anyone who was interested. Thanks, y'all. Taking a day to avoid the abyss of despair by indulging in some ball and Zelda? Now that's what I call self-care. And kudos on the sobriety streak, OP. 
Operation Pack and Ditch, dropping off for stuff like a surprise Amazon delivery, except with a more emotional baggage. And props to your buddy for the rooftop drop off. Classic move. But wait, a text to Rose's parents just in case she's spreading more lies than Pinocchio after Tequila Bender. Talk about covering your bases like a pro. Here's a closure, OP. May your future be brighter than a master sword in the temple of time. And if you ever need a shoulder to cry on, just remember, Zelda never judges. Cheers, and may the Triforce be with you. Do you have a similar story? Share it with us in the comments below. Next up, in the game of life, some people choose to play chess. Others prefer a scandalous game of Twister in their marital bed. My stepdaughter died four weeks ago, and I caught my husband and his ex-wife in our bed. My stepdaughter, Becca, 14 female, died four weeks ago. I've been in her life since she was seven years old, and we were extremely close. My husband, Derek, 40 male, his ex-wife, Sam, 38 female, and I, 35 female, get along very well. There's never been an issue in the seven years that I've been with Derek. Sam has always been kind to me. She didn't even care that Becca called me mom, too. Right after Becca's passing, Sam had so much anxiety and depression that she was unable to be by herself. She has no family besides us, so we invited her to stay with us. Sam hardly leaves the house, mostly just sleeps in Becca's room, which is completely understandable. I always tell her that I'm here if she needs me and that I want her to take her time with grieving and that there's no pressure to go back to her home. Today, I needed to run some errands, so I asked Sam if she'd like to join me to get out of the house a little bit, but she declined and said she'd rather just stay at the house and sleep. I told Derek that I was leaving and that I would be back in two-ish hours. He works from home. I also told him to check on Sam every once in a while and maybe try to get her to eat something. After stopping at the post office, I realized I forgot my library book that I needed to return, so I went back home to get it. As soon as I walked in the door, I heard moaning coming from mine and Derek's bedroom. I immediately knew what was happening and my heart completely broke in that moment. I wasn't completely sure what to do, but I ended up deciding to confront them. So I walked to the bedroom and opened the door and began yelling at them both. Sam started having an anxiety attack and ran to the bathroom while Derek kept apologizing profusely. I asked him what the hell was happening. He told me that he made himself and Sam some lunch and they began talking about Becca and shared some memories. And then Sam ended up kissing him and he didn't pull back. And then it ended with them in our bed. They're begging me to understand that it was just grief that caused them to become intimate and that they both made a mistake. I don't know what to do. I love this man and I love Sam. I'm heartbroken that they did this to me and put me in this position. I feel so stuck. Let's check in with the audience for some relevant comments. First up, that would be a hard no for me. I understand grieving, but how is this excusing cheating? What happens next time he is sad? Edit, I misspoke when I said sad. Obviously, this is something beyond devastating. I still don't think it can be used as an excuse. The OP replies, I don't want to excuse his cheating. I think I want to divorce him, but I'm anxious about doing it right after we lost Becca. Someone else adds, probably together. Do you both own the home? If it's in your name, change the locks. Stay strong and don't listen to his excuses. I'm so sorry this happened to you during such a difficult time. The OP replies, exactly what I was thinking if I'm being honest. And yes, we both own it. When I told him to leave, he kept saying sorry and then said that he would leave and respect me wanting him gone for a while. The next comment says, are you seeing a therapist perhaps? You're dealing with a lot right now. It might be useful. The OP replies, yes, I'm in therapy. I've been with my therapist for other things for the last three years. She's been very helpful. I saw her yesterday and was able to figure some things out. Well, talk about turning grief into a threesome. Looks like Sam took sharing memories a bit too literally. I mean, who knew mourning could be so arousing? Derek and Sam figured the best way to cope with loss was to dive headfirst into each other's arms. Classic move, right? And the best part? They're trying to sell you the grief-induced intimacy excuse. Sure, because nothing says, I miss our daughter, like getting it on with your ex's new wife. Update 1, May 11th, 2024. I decided that I'm filing for divorce. I can't ever trust Derek again. It sucks because we had an amazing relationship, I thought. He's always been great, so this was a complete shock to me. Last night, Derek came over to talk. He confessed to a lot. Turns out it wasn't their first time having sex like most people thought. They've been having sex since three months before Becca died. I'm completely shocked and heartbroken. Sam also reached out last night and thanked me for everything I've done for her and told me she was sorry. I didn't respond. I blocked her. 
I did so much for Sam and considered her a friend, so this hurts a lot more than I can handle. This is all too much. As hard as this is going to be, I need to leave Derek and cut them both out of my life. I'm ready to do so. I am done. Also, some people are saying I deserve this because I should have known better than to let Sam into our home around Derek. But you need to understand that I'm a giving person. I trust people more than I should. I truly thought Sam was an amazing person. I know it's unusual to become friends with your husband's ex-wife, but it's just how it went for us and I shouldn't be blamed for what happened. Thank you to everyone who commented nice things and for the kind messages. You've all been helpful during this insanely difficult time. I appreciate it. A couple more comments from the audience. Out of curiosity, what are his excuses for cheating? Those two are going to be in a world of hurt. Once the guilt settles in, they're going to be asking themselves why it had to be Becca and will eventually come to the conclusion that it's their punishment for what they've done to you. I can pretty much guarantee you that. The OP replied, He told me they just accidentally reconnected one night when I was away at my mom's. He was stressed we weren't conceiving and were having miscarriages. So he vented to Sam and then somehow that led to sex. It seems so icky to me. How can he vent about our struggles like that and then go and have sex with Sam? It's just awful of him. I don't understand it. Editor's note, remove the first half of the update as it was a rehash of update one. So Derek's been multitasking, huh? Juggling both you and Sam like some sort of twisted love triangle. Three's a crowd, they say, but apparently Derek and Sam missed the memo. And Sam, oh Sam, thanks you for everything and apologizes? Gee, thanks for the hallmark moment amidst the wreckage of your marriage. Maybe she'll send a fruit basket next. Update two, May 13th, 2024. I'm getting a lot of questions about some things, so I figured I'd answer a few of them. Have I told anyone about what happened besides my mom? Yes, I told a few friends and some family members. Most of them are supportive of my decision and aren't speaking to Derek. Where is Derek staying? Currently, he's staying in a hotel. Our friends re refuse to let him stay with them. He's lost a lot of people due to his awful decisions. Has he tried fighting me on getting a divorce? Yes, he begged me not to file for divorce. But when I told him I needed him to just let me go and that I was too exhausted to fight him on this, he let it be and agreed to get a divorce. Why isn't Derek staying with Sam? He told me he didn't want to continue to hurt me. So he told Sam he was done with her for good and that they have no reason to speak to each other anymore. I have no idea if that'll last and if they'll just end up together, but I truly don't care what they do anymore. I just want peace. What was Derek's excuse for cheating? He told me that they accidentally reconnected one night when I was away at my mom's. He was stressed we weren't conceiving and were having miscarriages. So he vented to Sam and then somehow that led to sex. Disgusting of them both, I know. Feel free to ask anything else and I'll try to answer. Thank you everyone for your support and advice. Now for some relevant comments. The OP on what happened to Becca. The OP replies, it was very sudden. She died in a car accident when she was with one of her friends and her friend's parents. The OP on her husband's parents being supportive or not, and if they know about his cheating. I get along with Derek's mom very well, but he's also a mama's boy, so it's kind of complicated. She will always be there for him. He'd stay with her if she didn't live across the country. She knows what he did and told me she had a talk with him, but said that he's still her son and she'd help him with anything if he needed it. I'm thinking I need to cut her out of my life too, which makes me really sad because we were close and talked on the phone almost daily. The OP on if she has children with her husband. We've had six miscarriages total. All of them were in the first trimester. Now for some more updates. I just found out that he is staying with Sam and not at the hotel. He told me it's too expensive to stay at a hotel and Sam is the only one that'll help him right now. I had a feeling this would happen. Just knowing that they are still probably sleeping together hurts my heart. I talked to a lawyer this morning and we are proceeding with the divorce and Derek agreed to it. It's actually happening and I feel some relief that he's not fighting me on this. My mom leaves on Sunday. I'm scared to be alone, but I go back to work on Monday, so I'm hoping it'll be a good distraction. I'll keep updating if anything else happens. Thank you everyone. I'm so grateful for you all. Back to some more relevant comments from the audience. OP, how did you find out he was staying at his ex-wife's place? Anything he says should be taken with a grain of salt. He is not true to his words in going on contact with Sam. The OP replies, he texted me this morning after we talked to lawyers and said he just wants to be honest with me. I told him to stop giving me updates on what he's doing in his life and that it's not something I need to know. It seems like he wanted to tell me to hurt me. The OP on how she's doing. 
Thank you. I'm doing a little better today. My mom and I went on some nature walks and went out into the garden this afternoon. That helped. Becca loved gardening with me, so it made me feel closer to her. Hotel? More like Heartbreak Inn, where the only continental breakfast is a side of regret. And I guess friends in his dictionary means people who ghost you faster than Casper on speed dial. But wait, there's a twist. Derek's decided to shack up with good old Sam after all. Because nothing says, I'm sorry for cheating, like running back into the arms of your, the person you cheated with. Real smooth, Derek. Real smooth. And his excuse? Oh, it's a real gem. Stress and miscarriages led to sex with the ex. Ah, uh, the classic stress relief method. Cheat on your wife. Works like a charm, apparently. Becca's Diary, May 15th, 2024. I decided to go through some of Becca's stuff today. I just found her diary in a box in the back of her closet. Would it be wrong to read some of it? I feel like it would help me feel closer to her, but part of me feels like it's wrong too. I haven't told Derek that I found it either, and I'm unsure if I should tell him. What would you do? Ask, and you'll get some comments back. OP on if she was closer with Rebecca prior to her sudden passing. Becca and I were very close. It felt like she told me anything and everything, but I honestly think all parents feel that way about their kids, so I'm kind of nervous to read it. Just a little update, May 19th, 2024. I figured it's been a few days, so I should give a little update. My mom is leaving in a couple hours, so I'll be alone. I'm kind of nervous about it. She helped me stay distracted and kept me going. I don't know how I'm going to handle her being gone. I go back to work tomorrow, first day back since Becca passed away. I'm looking forward to it though because it'll keep me distracted. Also, I did read some of Becca's diary. It made me love her even more. She was such a sweetheart. I went back a few months and saw that she noticed some weird behavior between Derek and Sam. Didn't mention that she knew of the affair, but she just wrote that she thought it was kind of strange that they all three would hang out more than usual without me. I might read more, but so far I haven't found anything that's disturbing. Just her being a teenager and talking about crushes, fights with friends, happy family memories, etc. Tomorrow, I'm also talking to my lawyer, so I might have more updates on that. Thanks for the continuous love and support, everyone. Last update for a while, May 26th, 2024. Started randomly getting a lot more messages, comments, so I figured I'd do another little last update. My first week back at work went great. I wasn't expecting it to go so well, but thankfully it did. My coworkers were so helpful and patient with me. On Friday night, I decided I didn't want to stay at home all weekend alone, so I decided to drive up to my mom's. It helps I have a three day weekend so I can spend more time with her. I'm heading back home tomorrow. Also, for those of you that have messaged me hateful things for reading Becca's diary, I just have to say, you aren't in my shoes right now. Telling me I'm a bad mom because I'm reading her diary is just ridiculous. I learned so much more about her, about how caring and how sweet she is, and it made me love her even more. It's how I'm able to feel so close to her right now. So please don't tell me I'm a bad parent just for trying to get by one of the hardest times in my life. You have no idea what it's like. I don't have much of an update, so this will be it. I'll come back and update once the divorce happens though. Thank you to those of you that have been nothing but kind and helpful. You help me feel less alone, I'll be forever grateful. Ah, the age-old dilemma. To snoop or not to snoop in your dead daughter's diary. Just another day in the life, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to take a peek into the inner workings of their offspring's mind, especially when they're not around to stop you? Too soon? And lo and behold, what do we find? Teenage crushes, family memories, and oh, a sprinkle of suspicious behavior between Derek and Sam. Because nothing says quality family time like a love triangle brewing in the background. New update, Sam saw my Reddit post and is threatening to sue me, June 1st, 2024. Sam made a fake Facebook profile to message me and tell me she wants to sue me for telling strangers about what happened. Derek supports her apparently. I don't need this. Am I not allowed to vent about my life to people online? I just want my life to get better. I'm so tired. F you, Sam. F you, Derek. Edit. Sam is in the comments and messaged me on here too. Blocked her. More additional information from OP. On the messages from Sam. No, I just ignored her. It might be an empty threat just to make my life harder, but I'm unsure. Her message said, So I was scrolling TikTok and ended up on an account where they read Reddit posts. And guess whose post they read? Yours. First you tell friends and family, and then you go to a bunch of strangers and tell them our life story? I can't believe you. It isn't just your business to tell. Becca would be so disappointed in you. Be prepared, because I think I'm going to be suing you for this. This was no one else's business. You did this to yourself. Remember that. 
I'm actually baffled. She thinks Becca would be disappointed in me? What the F? The old threat of a lawsuit, the ultimate, I'm mad at you and I want you to know it move. Because nothing says, let's resolve our issues like mature adults, like threatening legal action over a Reddit post. I mean, forget about resolving things like civilized human beings, right? Let's just skip straight to the courtroom drama. But hey, who needs a support system when you've got strangers on the internet, am I right? Because clearly, venting online is a crime punishable by legal action. And Sam's little guilt trip about Becca being disappointed? Classic manipulation tactic. Because nothing says, I'm a victim here, like dragging a deceased child into the mix. What do you make of all this? What would you have done? Do you blame her for posting on Reddit? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.